Let us try to understand the types of antibodies and the structure of a typical antibody. Types, there are some important antibodies. We normally talk about five antibodies and antibodies written as Ig, immunoglobulins. So IgG, IgA, IgE, IgD, and IgM. These are the five that we talk about. IgG are the most abundant antibodies and they are transplacenta. They can cross the placenta and that is one antibody which is given from mother to the fetus. So the babies are born with these. This is passive immunity. The babies did not synthesize these antibodies. The mother passed it on to them. And this is one transplacental antibody. IgA is present in colostra. It is present in saliva. It is present in tears. So mother after the birth of the baby, the mother even is giving the ready-made antibody. But now the antibody has changed. It is IgA. And IgE are responsible for allergic reactions. IgD and M we normally don't talk of in detail, which is not in our syllabus, that's why. But these are the biggest ones in size and they have delta chains. That is why the name D. A typical antibody looks a Y-shaped structure. And it is known as H2L2. It has two heavy chains and two light chains. So if we draw the structure, the antibody is going to look like this. This is the heavy chain. And these are proteins, that is polypeptides. Another chain. These are the heavy chains. Heavy because they are made up of more number of amino acids. In this heavy chain towards the fork, one part is variable. Variable means it can change. And the other part is a constant part that means that part is going to remain as it is. So this is the heavy chain and this is the variable part of heavy chain. And the other part is known as the constant part of heavy chain. Constant part of heavy chain. So these are the two heavy chains. We will see how these chains are connected. Now let us come to the lighter chain. So it is H2, L2. So where are those two light chains? So let us make one light chain here. This is one light chain. A smaller polypeptide chain. Less number of amino acids. And this also has a variable part that means this can change and a constant part. Let us label this now. Let me give this part here. This is the variable part and this is variable part of light chain. And this is the constant part of light chain. So there are two light chains and two heavy chains and that's why the structure is known as H2L2. Two heavy chains, two light chains. Now let us make some changes here in this part so that we understand it. These are the active sites or some sites where the antigen can come and bind. So this is that active site. So which type of an antigen can come and bind here? The antigen should be something like this. 
Now we are trying to represent it with a shape, but we know it is a specific uh, active site. One antibody will have only one type of active site, so that only one antigen can bind with it. That means these antibodies are going to be specific. Now we want all these four chains to remain together. So there is a disulfide bond between the constant part of variable chain and the constant part of heavy chain. Similarly, there is going to be one here. This is a disulfide bond between again the constant part of variable and constant part of heavy chain. Plus, there are two disulfide bonds between the constant parts of the heavy chains. So, total four disulfide bonds are there. So, this one and this one, these are disulfide bonds. Total four bonds are there. And disulfide bonds are formed between the sulfur containing amino acids. That means here there is a sulfur containing amino acid and here also. But they are of different chains. Sulfur containing amino acids of the same chain will also make bond. So here in the variable part there is going to be a loop. If the bond is formed between sulfur containing amino acid of one chain and sulfur containing amino acid of the other chain. Then we will call it disulfide bond. If the bond is formed between sulfur containing amino acid and sulfur containing amino acid of the same chain, then we will call it sulfur-sulfur loop. So here is one sulfur-sulfur loop. Here is one sulfur-sulfur loop. Here is one here is one and here is one. Same is going to be here. So total number of disulfide bonds is four. Total. That is one, two, three and four. Sulfur sulfur loops is one, two, three, four, five and six and six of that. That is twelve. So these are, they are written as sulfur, sulfur loops and their number is 12 in an antibody. So now what is variable here? This part can change. <coughs> if this part changes, the active sites will change. I can show you one more possibility, but don't get confused that two types of binding sites can be in one antibody. One antibody will have only one. Suppose here, we make it like this. That means the antigen which can bind here is going to be like this. So antibodies are specific for a particular antigen. So this site is actually an antigen binding site and these are the antibody binding sites. This is an antigen. This is an antigen. So antigen will have antibody binding site. An antibody will have antigen binding site. This is known as parato. This is parato. And this is known as epito. These are technical names given to the binding sites. Now if you look at this diagram carefully, at this end N is written. And at this end, C is written. One is a C terminal, one is a N terminal. This is a polypeptide chain. And we know in a polypeptide chain, amino acids, amino acids bind. So here the amino group is free and here the carboxyl group is free. So this is a typical antibody. And why we say they are specific? Because they have specific binding sites. So what is the difference in different antibodies? 
The difference is that their variable parts keep changing and that is why you call them variable. So it can have one type of binding site, so it is specific for this antigen. If it has this type of antigen binding site, then it is specific for this antigen. So this is why it is known as H2L2. Two heavy chains and two light chains. And remember where the C terminal and N terminal are. So questions have been asked on the structure of antibodies and the types which are transplacental, which are present in colostrum and so on. 